Hey guys, it's Judy from Nutrition with Judy. guys are doing well. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Judy Cho and I am a nutritional therapy practitioner. I also am the author of Carnivore Cure. I have a private practice in Austin, Texas and virtually I see clients where I help clients get to root cause healing and oftentimes it is related to gut health and I use a meat-based elimination diet to help them to heal. I also share on multiple social media platforms information to help you get to your own root cause healing. If you enjoy my videos, please make sure to subscribe and please share the videos for people that you know may benefit from them. Okay, so today I am just going to talk a little bit about electrolytes. I think there's oftentimes people are struggling to just find a balance with electrolytes and making sure that they enough of the kind of fluid to help their body's balance. Just as an FYI, I have on my Nutrition with Judy blog, I have two blog posts related to salt and balancing electrolytes and what it all means. We essentially have fluid in our bodies that basically help to balance electrolytes and just things going on in the body. We have different hormones and different pumps that allow certain electrolytes to in out of cells. And this is why it's so important to make sure that we have a bunch of essential minerals that will help the body function. We use minerals as spark plugs to get things going. So if you think about hormones and their role is to basically be messengers for just things to happen, right? So we're stressed, then the adrenals release cortisol. We eat sugar, so then insulin is produced to pull away the sugar from our blood. So all of these things are messengers, right? So they get a signal and then things happen in the body. That's what kind of hormones do. And then minerals, they are the spark plugs. So without minerals, certain things cannot happen. And this is why it's so important important that we have enough minerals and electrolytes are essentially minerals. So if you think about sodium, uh, calcium, potassium, these are all really, really important minerals. Zero carb, uh, keto, carnivore diet. The reason why we start to have these kind of difficulties with electrolytes, which we thought we never had before is because we are no longer holding as much water in the body that we used to when we used to eat a lot of sugar. So for every glucose molecule we have in our body, we, I think it's like we have about two extra molecules of water that surround the glucose. And then so basically the more water we have, the more abilities to hold more electrolytes. And that's why you don't get like fatigue from lack of electrolytes or not enough sodium causing headaches. It's not as apparent when you're eating like a standard American diet, but when you start having the water loss, when you go low carb or zero carb, then you're going to notice these difference. And at first, we just need to manage it properly. I noticed that a lot of people in the community will start taking exogenous magnesium or exogenous potassium, extra salt. And I think the salt is really good. But in general, I think the other electrolytes, I think it's causing the body to basically never find a balance, right? So if you think about it before carnivore, oftentimes maybe we're taking a multivitamin that will have some of these minerals, but in general, we're not worried about, okay, I need to balance my magnesium with my potassium and my sodium with my potassium. We don't really think about these things because well, one, we have so much inflammation in the body. We don't know, you know, what's up from down, but when you are doing a carnivore diet, you want to make sure that your body will find a new homeostasis in the body. So a new kind of set point that the body can naturally function. And so when we keep using these exogenous supplements, that's the risk of never finding its balance. So a lot of my clients, one of the big concerns is I still can't balance my electrolytes. And so they're taking potassium, then they're trying milligrams of hundreds of milligrams of magnesium, or then they take some calcium. And I always just actually reel them back and I say, okay, instead of taking these powders, these um, electrolyte exogenous like drops and all that, that may be all good while you're first transitioning to make sure that you are hydrating your body, that the electrolyte mineral balance is good. But in general, once you're sort of adapted, so maybe a month in, you kind of want to let your body balance on its own. Um, I personally would recommend just doing sole water from the beginning. So that is basically adding a lot of salt into a cup of water and then letting it kind of absorb um, and find a new balance within the water and the sodium and chloride um, and all the other minerals that are in it. But basically it allows the minerals to unbind and saturate the water. And so now you have a very nutrient dense mineral rich water 
that you can then add to kind of your um, just regular water that you drink. So what I recommend people do is that overnight get like a mason jar. Um, maybe it's like 12 ounces, 16, 20, I don't know, but whatever amount you want and then fill it with one to two cups of water, um, salt. So I recommend either Himalayan salt. And I know there are concerns with Himalayan salt having um, heavy metals, but I just have not seen it in my practice to be an issue. And we even test for hair tissue mineral analysis where I have not seen that happen. So until it does, I'm still a fan. I think you could use some pink salt. Redmond salt is really good as well. That's uh, salt from Utah. So it's, you know, locally sourced. And then you could use like Celtic salt. So you could do like a blend of all three to try to hedge your bets and get a bunch of minerals in your water, but do one to two cups of that. You can mix all three, do individual, whatever you like. Some people use iodized salt because Again, it's processed, it's chemically washed and clean. And in my blog post, I talk more about all the little nuances in it. Um, they use bleach, not really a fan. Anyways, so if you add the salt, then you just add water until the, you know, basically the top, shake it a little bit, or you could stir it with the spoon and then kind of leave it overnight and let the water balance. Um, ideally, if the water is fully saturated, you'll see salt on the bottom of the cup. If there is none, that means you probably need more salt, but you could still kind of drink it that way. So the next morning, you can start with then just like an eight ounces of filtered water. And then you just add about probably like you could start with one teaspoon of Soleil water and then mix it with your water and then drink it and then see how you feel throughout the day. If you feel like a headache is coming on, then you probably need a little bit more sodium. I recommend and people put a quarter teaspoon under their tongue so they don't feel the saltiness then if it's like kind of under your tongue, you'll better absorb the salt um, pretty quickly. And then normally with my clients, so the morning solely water is sufficient, but, and then just salting their meats. But if it's not enough, then I would try a midday amount of sole water as well. And then let the body find its balance. So after that at night, another thing I notice is that people get leg cramps. So Oftentimes, again, it's that, you know, now we're going zero carb. And so our bodies, our minerals have to rebalance inside our bodies. So with the Soleil water, you can try a little bit of Soleil water before bed and then use some magnesium spray. So if you spray magnesium spray on your calves, I've noticed that with 90% of my clients and then hundreds of people on social media, they say that they no longer get leg cramps. So they just kind of use the spray or lotion and then they could rub it on their calves or inner thighs or, you know, wherever you want. And then the magnesium basically topically will absorb into the bloodstream and it doesn't have to go through the digestive process. And so you have a higher chance of the magnesium actually absorbing into your body. Uh, when you take supplements, there's just a risk that it's not absorbing as much. And so I have just seen almost every client that comes to me is already taking magnesium. Um, as a oral supplement and they are still not balancing it out. So the question becomes, well, maybe it's not working or I have clients that are taking exogenous, you know, the powders or the drops and then one day they don't take it, then they're getting the headaches. They just feel weak and just general not so great feeling. So try the Soleil water, try to get as much of the minerals in your body and then let it balance. Stress, uh, adrenals, there are so many different things in the body that also affect your mineral balance. So as we are kind of fine tuning our kind of new balance, we also need to manage our stress. And I, that's why I always keep coming back to stress. But if you are naturally stressed uh, from lifestyle stressors, work, kids, finances, whatever it is, or you're not sleeping well, over time as your adrenals are like overworking your aldosterone, which is a hormone um, also released by the adrenals will start to kind of hold on to excess salt. So it's one of those things where it's actually a deficiency, but it can show as excess. So it's actually the opposite of if you're like insulin resistant, that type of thing. But basically, if you are starting to get high blood pressure, and you feel like, Oh, no, I need to cut down on the salt and you're eating zero carb, or you're eating a meat based diet, it's likely not the fact that you're eating too much salt, it might be actually that one your body is stressed. And so aldosterone is, you know, overly shooting and making you hold on to salt, but you actually maybe need more because adrenals love salt. You may need to just figure that out. But the core root is that you need to figure out what's causing the stress. Maybe you're eating too much protein. Go back and watch my macro video on, you know, what the ideals of the amount of proteins you should be eating to not really affect blood sugar levels and, uh, you know, protein becoming gluconeogenesis, but you want to just get to the root cause work on basically supporting aldosterone to not hold on to so much salt, because that is what is causing high blood pressure. Again, I have a blog post that talks really into detail and the nuances of why it happens and why it's not really that salt is to blame, but 
maybe some other stuff that's going on in the body. You need to manage stress. It is so, so important for optimal health. One other thing I'll recommend is so as people do the sole water and then they manage their macros and eating enough fat and they're not eating so much protein that they're waking up in the middle of the night, it starts kind of working together really well. If you are getting leg cramps, try the magnesium spray. I have a blog post and I'll put all of this in the show notes, but I have a blog post where you can either buy magnesium spray and then just put it on your legs or you can uh, make your own if you are uh, sensitive to sulfur. You can make your own magnesium spray version that doesn't have the sulfur. So all of these things are really good. The magnesium spray works kind of like an Epsom salt bath. So it's kind of like an Epsom salt bath in a bottle, but it helps your body also relax. So magnesium helps the body relax. So that's also part of the electrolyte balance. So you just want to make sure to get enough magnesium and then also make sure to get enough sodium. If you are eating meats, then you should be getting your potassium from there too. I'm not the biggest fan of adding extra potassium just because you can easily overdose on potassium and land yourself in the hospital. I have a few people that I know that have done that. Uh, I have like a person that started keto that also landed in the hospital from doing that. So just be mindful of that. But again, it's very tricky to balance these electrolytes. And, you know, we just don't want to play God and do things when we're not 100% sure what's going on. If you are getting high blood pressure on a carnivore diet, you need to figure out what is causing it, right? It's usually not the salt. Obviously, aldosterone will hold on to the salt and then your blood pressure will go up from that and the swelling and all that. But it's usually a different root cause that is just the symptom. So get to that. If you're not sleeping through the night, if you are stressed, those might be reasons why aldosterone is now doing this. So it's just telling you that something is off. It's the signal for that. One last thing is you can test your hair tissue mineral analysis test. It is a test that basically pulls some of your hair. So if you get blood work done for uh, mineral status, it will just show that kind of status in time that for a very short bit. Whereas if you use your hair, it's basically three months of mineral status within your cells. So it's a pretty powerful tool and just kind of seeing how your minerals are functioning in your body. Now, I know that most people that take the HTMA test, the practitioners that are big advocates of this test and then kind of dictate their nutritional recommendations based on it, they will all say that carnivore is not the way to eat for mineral balance. But I am going to throw up uh, four samples from random clients. And I just want you to see that it's not that simple. Um, You know, they will say you need fiber to then remove some of the toxins like the toxic um, elements or you need fibrous vegetables to keep your kind of system going. And it's just not that simple. And then the other thing is they will also say, oh, some of the mineral status will be better managed if you eat uh, more vegetables. But I just let me just show you. Okay, so if you look at these uh, four different carnivore Uh, clients of mine, you can tell that they're all different statuses. So I know it's kind of hard to see. And if you've never seen a hair tissue mineral test, I know this looks like gibberish, but essentially there are nutritional elements and these are the kind of individual different minerals. So there's calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, uh, copper, zinc, phosphorus, uh, and so on. So, and then there are ratios and these ratios are related to adrenals, your digestion, vitality. Um, there's also thyroid and so on and so forth. So if you look at all of these, just from an, a zoomed out point of view, when there are certain balances in the ratios and the individual minerals that are deficient or in excess, a lot of people will go, it's the diet it's the diet. And I hear it so often. And then when I put all, and the thing is not everyone gets all the data that I get to see. So it's kind of cool seeing this, but if you see, like, let's say they say, Oh, you know, copper is high because you're eating such a high meat diet and it's because of copper. So then you see here, this person is high in copper. This person's in the good range. This person's uh, very high and this person's almost deficient. And again, they're all eating meat based, right? So, and then you could say the same thing about zinc or magnesium or potassium or calcium. So they all differ. And so the takeaway point in all of this is that these tests are really good to kind of tell you what is going on in the moment, but it doesn't tell you the why, right? So I know that client one probably needs to better balance their sodium and potassium in general. I would recommend they probably eat some more sodium. I have to look at the other things, but I would also check the other adrenal markers and things like that. I would also want to talk to them about their own, 
you know, lifestyle stressors, are they eating too much protein and things like that. But you don't want to just say it's the diet, it's the diet, right? Because there's always nuances. And so this is a perfect example of someone can just go to a HTMA specialist and they will say, it's your carnivore diet. It's causing you to have these imbalances. And the thing is, if you look at all these people, they have different imbalances in every which way. So you know that it's not just the diet. Everyone needs to work on different minerals, but you, again, you have to find the root cause, right? So I hate when people take this test and then a lot of the practitioners will go, oh, you're deficient in calcium. You need some calcium. Oh, and you're deficient in magnesium. So you definitely need magnesium and then potassium and so on and so forth, right? You need to figure out and let the body balance on its own. And the way you'll know even more so than taking this test is how you feel, right? So if your energy balances are good, your thyroid seems good, you're eating the right macros, you're sleeping through the night and all of that, then your minerals will likely be balanced because everything is functioning well. I think the HTMA test is really good. It can help us to figure out, oh, you know, you may be feeling tired because, you know, this and this ratio is not working as well, or your digestive process is not functioning as well. But we also need to know that there are other parts than just the diet that can cause these things to happen. And one of the examples I keep bringing up is aldosterone. So aldosterone will hold your salt, even if you're not eating in excess and then make you think that you're getting high blood pressure and the swelling because, Hey, you've had too much salt, but what if it's just because your lifestyle is really stressful. So any amount of salt is going to make you feel like you have too much salt. So again, always get to the root cause. I think if you are struggling with electrolyte imbalances, I would, you know, make sure to eat the right macros. But then from there, try the sole water, try it in the morning, try it in the afternoon. And then you can have a little bit at night if you try, but you just got to figure out what's working for you and what's not. You might just need one um, in the morning and then that's it. You might need a couple times throughout the day. If you suffer from migraines, that might be a different story for you. I interviewed with Angela Stanton. And she basically says that people that suffer from migraines are genetically wired to need more salt. So the sodium potassium pump works differently in the body. So again, we just need to make sure that we are balancing. And just also as a nuance, you know, a lot of people on the carnivore space are like, I think I'm deficient in potassium. So I don't want to use exogenous potassium. So then they use avocados, but If you use avocados with sodium, you're basically canceling each other out almost. So if you really want to try if avocados will help with your electrolyte imbalances, you should be eating the avocados by itself. No salt. So potassium, no salt. So then you get a better balance of the sodium potassium pump. I hope that this has been helpful for you guys. I basically make it really simple for my clients. Just get some sole water, you know, use salt on your meats, um, get, obviously use a higher quality salt and then try some magnesium spray and then slowly wean off your magnesium supplements, wean off of any el- excess electrolytes. Now, if you are, you know, going for a marathon or you are excessively sweating outside, maybe you need even extra salt that day, but in general, let your body find its balance. We don't want to be, you know, out um, on a vacation and we forgot our electrolytes and now the, without these powders, we feel rotten, right? So let's try to get the body to rebalance. And it's not that the diet is making us have like this horrendous electrolyte imbalance. We may just be closer to root cause and now we can notice these imbalances in our electrolytes, but the core is why. Why is there an electrolyte imbalance? And sometimes it just requires some more digging, some testing, some working with a professional. All right, guys, I hope that this video has been helpful for you. If you find this to be helpful, please make sure to share it. Please make sure to subscribe so that you can hear more of this content. All right, guys, make sure to eat a lot of meat. Take care of your bodies because it is the only place you have to live. Take care, guys. Bye.